not even close. The world of workwear is huge, with companies that have been around for over a hundred years, but there are some new kids on the block that I want to introduce you to. Those are Snickers workwear, True Work workwear, and 1620 workwear. Welcome and thank you for watching. I'm Carl Murawski, and this is the channel that helps you own less and own better. When I started off my working career as a mechanic straight out of high school, I took the same approach to my clothing as I did to my tools. I bought the best that I could afford in the expectation that they would last me a long time thus making a good investment for my money, which was very little at the time. I wasn't making a whole lot of money as, an, as an, uh, a mechanic, but later on, as I became an electrician, uh, I did the same thing. I would buy tools that I thought would last a long time. I would buy gear, clothing, and boots that I thought would last a long time as well. Sometimes I was right, sometimes I was wrong. One thing that didn't seem to change, though, is that most workwear seemed like it was exactly the same in the 1990s as it was in the 1890s. And luckily, the three companies that I'm going to talk to you about today have taken that whole thing and flipped it on its head, so let's get into it. Let's start with the company that I get the most questions about, TrueWork. Now, TrueWork was started in 2015 in Colorado, and they have a really interesting approach, taking a lot of inspiration from outdoor brands and that kind of gear, but also from the Army's seven-layer system, making products that are meant to be worn in conjunction with one another. So they have base layers, mid layers, shell layers, and of course pants actually have three different levels. So they have lightweight pants, uh, I, and then they have these midweight pants, which I have right here. Then they also have some heavyweight pants. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna, I'm, this whole thing, this whole video is gonna be me like going through a bunch of workwear because I have a whole bunch of stuff in front of me. Um, and these right here are their heavyweight pants. Basically what it is, it feels like the same shell material or maybe, no, actually, you know what? These right here feel a little bit thicker. These are their heavyweight pants, but these also have an insulation on the inside. So they use this sort of honeycomb insulation. And I gotta tell you, I did wear these on a job uh, down in Groton near a sub base, which was right on the water and the wind was whipping off of the Thames River. And these things kept me nice and toasty warm. If you throw a base layer underneath this, you know, it's a pair of long johns or something, these things are gonna keep you crazy warm. So anyway, they have three different levels of pants. I have two of them here. They've actually been excellent. And I gotta say, one of the things that I like about them is that they do take inspiration from some outdoor brands. So I remember working on a job once. It was an eight building complex and I was the foreman. I was running around from, not running, but I was going from building to building all day. And I thought to myself, this is just crazy. When I was wearing duck canvas, it was just, you know, duck canvas is heavy. It doesn't really breathe well. It doesn't flex worth a damn. It's just old school workwear, like I mentioned. So I actually ended up buying a pair of, I think, Arcteryx or something like that at REI, you know, hiking pants that still had some durability to them, but they were thin and flexible. These actually remind me a lot of those because they have sort of the articulated knee. And a lot of times you'll see articulated elbows in, in workwear now, but more or less it's taken up a little bit in the back of the knee to give you an automatic bent knee. So that's the way you're walking all day long. It actually does make a difference. They also use a lot of stretch fabrics. Now this doesn't have a ton of stretch. I'm not gonna tell you that these things are like gym pants or anything like that, but they do have some stretch and it's four way stretch. So that means it goes this way and this way. It's not just two way stretch and it does make a difference. You definitely feel it. These things are full of pockets and luckily those pockets are also really well designed. So let me give you an example. The hand warmer pockets are uh, cut on an angle. So they don't just go straight from the waistband down here. They actually go uh, like a little bit of an angle right there. And then there's a reinforcement here where most of us will clip a knife. So a lot of times we'll have a pocket knife and that's just a little bit of extra reinforcement there. They're nice and deep. They're not crazy deep. Some of these things seem like they reach down to your knees and you'll lose stuff in them. These aren't too bad. They also have a little fifth pocket here, which is, is very shallow, but if you're gonna hide something or you're gonna keep something very small there, you could fit a Zippo in there, but that's probably about it. That's not too bad. They also have a lot of loops around them. So I noticed that there's a couple on the sides here. You got some loops there, which I assume are for suspenders or just whatever you wanna hang off of there. I actually put my keys on those because there's one big one in the back. So that's what makes me think that they're probably intended for suspenders, which actually let's face it. Suspenders are a much better way of keeping your pants up. I can't believe that they're not more widely accepted instead of like basically a tourniquet that goes around your waist. Suspenders are better. Another thing that a lot of brands have started to adopt is the crotch gusset. I think, I can't remember who was the original to do it. I think it might've been, I think it's called Diamond Brand. And their big thing was this diamond that they make in the crotch, which makes it much easier to crouch. And most of us who are working with our hands are always crouching or crawling or climbing a ladder or something like that. 
it definitely makes a difference. So these are uh, these are great. These are, like I said, these are actually the T2, is that what they are? Yes, the T2 pants right here in the tan. Let me move those out of there so I don't get them confused with the other ones. And the other ones that I showed you are, these are the T3 pants. So the layout is identical between the two, identical. And, uh, but these are just a little bit thicker, a little bit tougher with that nice, nice insulation. And I gotta tell you, I mean, heck, it's, it's, you know, winter time, but I really like these T3 pants a lot. So those are the pants. One of the other things that I have from them is a base layer. It's a long sleeve base layer. It's very nice. It's also like UV resistant and stuff. So if you want it to wear it outside, a lot of times now, if you're working in the sun, I see a lot of people who are wearing long sleeve shirts to just protect themselves from the sun. Back in the day, I gotta tell you, even myself, you would either just throw a hat on, you know, but I had hair at the time, believe it or not, and it would keep you protected. But now people are much more cognizant of it than ever. And, and you know, melanoma, those things like that, they're no joke. It's, it's worth protecting yourself from the sun. So that's also a base layer, but it also is UV protecting. So you can wear it outside or wear it underneath, like I said, as a base layer. And I really like the fact that they actually name their products like B1 for base layer, uh, M for mid layer, and then S for shell layer. It, it really helps those of us who need things nice and simple, you know what I mean? It really helps us understand what we're buying. Speaking of mid layers, I don't have it right here. I looked all over for this thing and I wear it so much that I must have put it somewhere that it's either in my car or I don't know where the damn thing is. I know I wore it recently and it's driving me nuts that I can't buy it. It's the Wooby hoodie. Now this is actually directly from the military and it's probably my favorite piece. I, I The work pants are great, the jacket's okay. I'll get into that in a second. But the Wooby hoodie is, is just probably one of the best workwear mid layers I've ever worn. It's simple, it gets out of the way, it's insulated nicely. It's so good that like I said, I've been wearing it in conjunction with all kinds of stuff as a great mid layer. You put this thing on, it does have hand warmer pockets, but that's it, a hood that pops up and you can wear this thing under anything and it just bumps the whole warmth level up to uh, you know another notch. Really great stuff. Now, as I mentioned, I did get one of their jackets. This here is the S3, yes, the S3 Solution hoodie. Has the same kind of waffle, I guess I would say honeycomb on the inside as the pants do. And I'll tell you what, it's okay. It's not bad. This has some stretch to it as well, which is nice. And I've seen they also have these in high vis, thank God, because you know, a lot of times your company is issue, they, they have to issue you high vis for your part of your PPE. So you have to get, you know, a hard hat if it's needed. A lot of times now gloves cut resistant three or four and then they also have to give you high vis. But most of the time what they'll do is they'll give you the most affordable stuff that they can. If they gotta buy hundreds of these things, then it really starts to add up. If you wanna get something a little bit better, it's nice that you can buy high vis on your own. You know, fun little fact here, I didn't realize that when I was working on the railroad, I couldn't wear yellow high vis until I actually spoke to somebody out there. They have to wear orange high vis that's also of a tear away style. So there's Velcro at the shoulders and on the side. So if a train catches this thing, uh, it'll, take it, I guess. I'm not gonna get that close to a train to find out, but the whole reason behind it is that in the spring foliage, that yellow high vis basically blends in with all of that new, uh, the new leaves and everything like that. They can't even see you. So you have to wear orange. And I think that you can wear, I think it's what, ANSI 3 where it's the orange and the yellow, but either way, it's nice that you can get high vis. Let me tell you a little bit more about this jacket here. I really hesitate to call this, I mean, it is a jacket, there's no doubt. The insulation is very minimal though. This is, I think, the heaviest that they have. The whole idea though is wearing it as a system, right? So you wear like the base layer, the wooby hoodie, and then this on top of it, and you actually will keep pretty warm. So this is uh, water resistant, it's stretchy, it's also pretty resistant to any kind of uh, tears or, or any kind of abrasion. But the thing is, there's a few little things that really started to niggle at me as I started to wear this. The first one is the zippers. So the zippers are tiny, right? They're really, really small. And one of the things that I used to do on all my zippers on my work wear is I would put a little piece of paracord, a little piece of uh, you know shoelace or something like that through the zippers so that I could operate them when I had gloves on. These are so small that if your hands are cold, good luck getting them open. The other problem is that they're dipped in some sort of a, uh, a plastic on the end. So there's not even a little space that you could put something through to extend that length a little bit. So that's a minor gripe, I know. And I think that again, they took more inspiration from outdoor brands, which seem to use this rather than those big chunky zippers. But for those of, of us who are actually working out in the field, this makes a difference. The other thing that really started to bother me is the sleeves right here. So the sleeves have a Velcro closure, which is decent. Listen to this, ready? 
Whatever's in there is pretty stiff. It makes a little bit of noise. That doesn't really bother me that much. This is what does. So that's your closure right there. You see how much sticks up at the end there? So that's always getting caught on stuff. It's just always getting hung up and then it opens up your sleeve or it's just in the way. This is too thick. This feels like Cordura. I think they use a lot of Cordura um, throughout their, their pieces and stuff like that. This is just, I don't think this needs to be so durable. True work, if you're watching, I think that this could easily be a lot thinner because it's very obtrusive and it sits like right on top of your wrist. So when you're working or reaching into things as we often are, it gets caught. And uh, there's been more than once that I've been very, very frustrated with this thing right here. Okay, but besides those two little things, it's a very good, simple jacket. It has a lot of nice little reflective, retro reflective details on it. I think True Work, their whole deal, their whole deal is basically, they're trying to make workwear pretty simple and bring it up into the, uh, the 21st century. Thank you. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, although True Work was founded in Colorado, a lot of their products are made elsewhere. The jacket here, this is made in Bangladesh, also made in Bangladesh, so, you know, Sometimes that doesn't mean anything to anybody. If you're getting a good deal and you're getting a good product, then most people just don't care the country of origin. Some people do though, and that's why I mention it. So prices for True Work are more or less in line with most premium workwear. I think that that jacket is somewhere around 150 bucks. The T2 pants are somewhere around 80. So they're you know on the higher end, but also right in line with a lot of stuff that is in the high end. So I mean, your, your higher end Carhartt stuff like their steel cargo work pants, I know those things are getting up there. Patagonia workwear, a couple of these other brands, you know, they're, they're also very, you get a lot of value out of them. So I'm not gonna tell you that you're gonna buy these things and they're gonna be junk. You're gonna spend a little bit more, you're also gonna get more and that's the whole kind of concept of this channel. All right, next up, Snickers workwear. They were founded in 1975, so maybe not quite a new kid on the block, but this is the brand that I had heard of, like rumblings of for years, especially you guys in the comments. It's so cool because you'll actually let me know the stuff that you want to see or say, hey, Carl, have you ever heard of uh, Snickers workwear? And, and I hadn't. And so I started looking into it a little bit more and I was really intrigued. So they actually started in Sweden. They were started by an electrician, believe it or not. So somebody close to my, uh, my heart. And he was just fed up with the workwear. He actually just went to his garage and started sewing up his own workwear. Then Snickers workwear was born, and that's what we have here. So again, 1975, not exactly a new kid on the block, but when you compare it to these companies that were started in the 1800s, they're still a baby, right? So Snickers, their whole thing is they're just trying to take workwear and bring it into the future, it seems like. And that they did, because these things are so feature-packed, it's unbelievable. Let's start with the, um, the most basic of the bunch here. This right here, now, it's really difficult to say exactly which models these are, what, you know, I mean, I could probably look back at my order history and find them, but they, they sort of have some interesting names and stuff, and they're so vast, their catalog is crazy. But this right here is one of their sort of moto collar or mock neck sweatshirts, zip front sweatshirt, and I wear this thing all the time. This thing is awesome. I've worn this underneath that Wooby hoodie, and I'm usually pretty good for the day, but it's a great mid-layer. It's thin, you know, but it has this neat woven design. This, though, could be easily found at, you know, REI or EMS or any outdoor goods brand. This, it feels like that's where it's made. Um, I really like this thing a lot. I wear it all the time. So that's the Snickers uh, kind of mid-layer thing. You know what I mean? You could wear that thing casually, anything like that, no problem. Something that you can't wear casually, or maybe you could, but, you know, it's, uh, it's up to you, is their pants. Holy moly. Their pants are so feature packed. I mean, they are more useful than a bag of 10 millimeter sockets. These things, let me show you the, the thing that they do a lot, okay? They call these hol holster pockets. So you got a normal pocket right here, but then inside you have this pocket, which basically has different openings for tools, little cargo pocket there. So if you have like little things, nuts, bolts, uh, wire nuts or something like that, fit in there, same thing on this side. These damn freaking, pants are so feature packed that if it would take me 20 minutes to go through each one okay on the legs you have all kinds of stuff little straps little places for a pen or you know there's a little cut out there so if you want to put something that's longer through that you can um i mean little holster pockets a little zipper here on the back of the knee they use a stretch fabric so you know you put them on and it feels like technical wear these are, are and actually these are the least technical of the two that i got okay the other one that i have these right here, check these things out. 
you know, same kind of deal, but it's like, holy moly. Now they use a lot of Cordura. Uh, Snickers also uses a lot of Gore-Tex, a lot of tech fabrics. Um, they also have one, I think it's called something like Duck Plus or Better Than Duck or something like that. But, you know, you actually get a pretty flexible pant, you know, compared to Duck Canvas, just with all kinds of reinforcements and features everywhere. It would take you a long time to go through one of these and figure out exactly what you needed. But the nice thing is that if you go on their website and you look through all the different versions of pants they have, and there are a lot, you could probably find one that will fit your exact needs. I mean, you know, I mean, wearing these to work, okay. You, I'll, I'll tell you what, a few people made some comments because they look pretty crazy. They're very, very technical looking. There's no doubt about it, but they really do work very well. And I said, like stretch fabric, you know, they also use the crotch gusset here, you know what I mean? So that's also stretchy. They have this little zipper pocket here. You know, this one here doesn't have the holster pockets that come out of the sides. Some of them do, and, and I just keep finding different compartments for things. These have so many compartments though that you almost start to forget where your stuff is. <laughs> so they work really, really well. And I gotta say, this is a brand that, I mean, I think that they're doing things exceptionally well. And I'd be really interested to know if in Europe, where these things are a little bit more common, if these are sort of the, the, the brand that most people will wear. They also have, well, these this pair does, a spot for knee pads haven't worn knee pads that are integrated into your pants, you're really missing out because you ever wear those ones that go on the outside and then they end up around the back of your knee or down by your ankle as you're walking around. If you ever wear knee pads inside of your, uh, your pants themselves, it's a game changer, it really is. So these things are just crazy. I mean, look at Cordura at the bottom here and uh, you know, like retroreflective piping. Again, I wouldn't wear it casually, but uh, you could, I guess. They also have these. Now, I remember Duluth Trading Company having these for a while, and they're more or less for accessories. So if you did want to take a pouch and put it in the outside here, they have one of these on either side. It flips over with a Velcro or hook and loop closure, I, I guess I should say. And you basically will stick whatever it is there, close that thing up, it's not going anywhere, and then you have a pouch that you can put on this side or on this side. And uh, their pants are just just next level. This feels like workwear of the future. These things are really slick. They are slicker than snot on a glass door now, I'm telling you. Anyway, those are okay. To me, they're a bit much. There's a lot there and people kind of look at you a little funny. But my favorite piece of the whole bunch is actually this jacket that I got. Now, this is not the kind of jacket that I will typically wear. It looks kind of like a ski jacket, right? Cordura on the back of the arms where you get the most wear. A little bit of retroreflective uh, labeling here. You know, they're actually, their branding is very minimal, which is nice. Some of these brands, you know, they're right out there with their with their branding. But, uh, and they have this very interesting insulation on the inside. You see that? Look at this. I mean, this almost, what this feels like to me, you ever sit on a, like a boat seat or something like that that's meant to, uh, or outdoor furniture, that kind of thing, where it's meant to be able to get wet but not hold on to moisture? That's what this feels like right here. It also has this kind of belt around the middle section which is kind of interesting, a cinch waist. But the reason I like this thing is that it doesn't look workwear-ish at all, but it does have stretch panels where you need them, has Cordura where you need them, has plenty of storage, and it's damn warm. I wore this thing um, during a very, very cold snap that we had, and it was, it, it punched above its weight. It was great. But this is like something that you'd see on the ski slope, really is. Now, even though Snickers is uh, a Swedish company, you'll find that their, comp their, their stuff is a lot of times made in different um, countries as well. So this is made in Vietnam. Their pants are made in Vietnam as well. So looks like they're sourcing a lot of their stuff from Vietnam, but not so much the next brand that I wanna tell you about. 1620 Workwear. I have mentioned 1620 Workwear before. They were founded in 2016 by Josh and Ted, two guys who look like dudes I would see in the construction site. They, they really just seem like down to earth guys. Now, my bias right out there, I like this brand. I've mentioned them before. I've been a fan. I've owned their products and used their products in the past. I really, really like them. Now they're higher priced, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I think that the shop pant here is somewhere in the hundreds. And I mean, and the other one I'm gonna show you later is like almost $200. But what they, you know, they make up for it with the quality, I'm telling you. These right here, this is the shop pant, and it's in a, if you can see, it's like a, like a navy, right? These are, these give you everything you would have ever wanted in workwear. They're stretchy like you would not believe. These things are, the of, of the bunch that I have here, the stretchiest. Look at this. I mean, it's crazy. Four-way stretch. 
these really do feel like gym pants. And yet again, I gotta go over here and get the pair of, these are the true work ones that I had before. The one difference that I noticed between 1620 and true work is you get a little bit of noise with the true work. Now these also, you know, are stretchy, like I mentioned, not as much as the 1620s, but enough that it makes a difference. But this is also what you kind of got to deal with, ready? Kind of like that snow pants sound. These don't have that. So these are the 1620s. If I do the same thing, I mean, you get a little bit of it, but not nearly as much as that one, not to be bothersome at all. Now, what I mean by these things basically give you everything that you would have ever wanted in a pair of work pants and more, I mean, you could put these things on and lounge around the house, no problem. They feel like sweats. They're unbelievable. They're also tough as nails, so you can wear them to work. But the third thing is they kind of look dressed up. I mean, like, in a way, doesn't this almost look like worsted wool or something you'd see on a pair of dress pants? I mean, they look pretty damn put together. Uh, but they're, look at this. They're insanely stretchy. Holy moly. They have pockets all over the place. Their pockets are exceptionally deep. The um, the hand openings are really, really big for them. I like that they have a lot of belt loops because a lot of times with this stretchy kind of fabric, you need something extra with a little bit of rigidity to hold your pants up, right? But these have it. Uh, I mean, I can't say enough about them. They are just unbelievable. The shop pants are probably my favorite. A lot of times if you're watching me on camera, I'm, I'm probably wearing the shop pants. I have these and I have another pair of them in the tan and I, I cannot tell you how much I love these damn things. They are just fantastic. If I had to say one that's like my favorite product from the brand, the shop pants are probably it. But of course, sometimes people need a little bit more than that. You know, I mean, those things, they're great, they're tough, but sometimes you need a little bit more. You need more storage, all that stuff. So their Nyko pant will do that for you. These are their double need model. And I actually have another pair. These are brand spanking new. As you can tell, they still have the crease in them and stuff. These are brand new. I actually have another model of these, but they're Cordura. They uh, they have double knees, as I mentioned, of course, you know. The back pocket design is really interesting. You see how that's on an angle? Um, big, big belt loops, like I mentioned. You know, this, this kind of hammer loop here. They also have, they, these just have a little bit of a different pocket layout. As I mentioned with the reinforcement on the pockets of the True Work, these have it as well. Uh, it's a bigger piece for sure. And these are just, these are built like a freaking tank. I mean, I'm telling you, you put these things on, they're unbelievable. Now, one of the other things that 1620 claims is that their products will last 10 times as long as traditional workwear. Now, none of this stuff here I would consider traditional workwear, but I think these would probably last longer than most canvas duck or denim that you've worn in the past. Again, Cordura is unbelievable stuff. But these right here, these will definitely take you to that next level if you if you need it, okay? Because they're also kind of not for the faint of heart. But same kind of deal, crotch gusset in here as well, that diamond that I mentioned that's sewn in, and they just feel very put together. There's a certain degree of, um, of heft and just a solid feeling for most of their products. Now, the one product that I, I just recently got that I think really, uh, you guys have been telling me for a long time that I have to check them out, and, and I hadn't, okay? And I'm sorry I didn't listen to you. Uh, it'll never happen again, I promise, is their hoodie. So, 1620 makes a work hoodie. One of the problems with most work hoodies is that since they're sort of, you know, borrowed from athleisure, right? They're usually pretty billowy. They get in the way. They're kind of a pain in the neck to wear at work. A lot of times, I don't like wearing them. The, the arms are too big, they get in the way, the front is too big and baggy. I just don't like it all that much. Well, 1620 did a lot of different things with their hoodie and thank you for bringing it to my attention because this thing is, it's unbelievable. I feel like about this, the same way I do about the American, um, American Giant hoodie, which is just like, this took the original hoodie formula and turned up to 11. Now the difference is, this one wearing it casually is a little bit more difficult than the American Giant because it has Cordura for the kangaroo pouch. So this is where you get a lot of your abrasion, right? On the front of this pouch. This whole thing is Cordura though. And that thing is gonna take abrasion and not, not flinch. On the inside, you also have a little Cordura pocket, which is big enough to hold your cell phone. So your cell phone will sit in there and not get lost. There's also a gutter around the front. So if something is in there, it doesn't roll out the sides. This is their tech hoodie which has some Cordura around the sleeves and on the backside of the elbows, again, where you have a lot of uh, abrasion. I know that a couple of their other models don't. I believe, matter of fact, I think this is the only one that does. One of the other things that I like about it, it doesn't have pull strings. So 
a string hanging down from your hoodie is a bad idea because if that gets caught in any kind of rotating machinery, it's not gonna end well. Instead, what they do is they have a couple of mil spec snaps right here. Now, I kinda don't have a neck, right? I, it looks like my, my head is sitting like right on my shoulders, right? I'm built like a fire hydrant, what do you want from me? And I can do that first uh, snap. If I put up the hood, then I can do the second one and it brings it right up to about here. So it really does keep out the cold if you need it. The other thing I will say about this hoodie is that it's slim fit, like very, very trim. Matter of fact, when I went to put it on for the first time, I was like, oh damn, did I order the wrong size? And I looked at it, no, this is a large. This is the way they're supposed to fit. But the whole thing is that these arms are smaller so that they don't get caught on things and that you could easily put them through a vest or a jacket where this is a mid-layer. Um, the body is nice and slim, so it's not getting in the way. You know, you reach down for a tool pouch or something like that, it's, it's, it stays out of the way. It also feels like it's a little bit longer. So a lot of times hoodies, they'll sit here and when you reach up, all of a sudden your belly button's sticking out, you know? And if you're a guy, you know, like me, who's rocking a keg more than a six pack, well, sometimes that could be a little embarrassing. But I would say that if you are one of those guys who maybe is on the bigger side, make sure that you size up because this is definitely trim. They're great, but I wanna let you know about the fit. So the fit is just a little bit trim on these. Now, last but not least from 1620 Workwear, I have one of their vests here, and I think this is the least fleshed out of the bunch. Not saying that it's bad. This is still the same kind of deal, Cordura, a little bit of insulation on the inside, but it's very, very basic. And uh, I, I just think that, you know, with all the innovations that they've done and the stuff that they've come out with, with their shop pant, with their hoodie, and their other pants, which just are, honestly, the best that I've tried. They're just so good, so good, that I think that their jackets and their vests might be up next. Um, you know, they're not bad at all. This is great, especially when layered with that hoodie, their, their work vest is great. It has pockets, which is what you want, right? Has big pockets, no closure on the pockets, has a nice zipper, has a storm flap, doesn't have much of a collar. You know, it's, it's what you want. One of the things that I noticed that uh, 1620 does, and I couldn't believe that other uh, companies haven't done it, is that their zippers operate the opposite way that almost every other companies do. So when they're down, they're closed, okay? This is the chest zipper right here. When they're up, they're open. So what's nice about this is that if you were to think about, you know, the way gravity works, or, or you know, if you're moving around and you accidentally will pull that thing down, it'll be open but in the down position, it's not going anywhere. So you can hit this thing as much as you want. Even if you are gonna hit it up, it's not gonna go anywhere. And that also goes for their zippers that are on their, their pants and stuff like that. These operate down, which I think was a very good move. Now, as you can see with all these products here from 1620, the branding is very minimal. It's not like some of these other brands where it's very out there, right in your face. And I know that's a big problem that people have with Carhartt, you know, that they slap that C on everything. Some people like it, some people don't. But usually you'll find a 1620 flag on almost all of their products. Now, 1620 is higher priced, as I mentioned. Unfortunately, you know, quality comes at a price. But one of the things that they also have is a lifetime guarantee. So you can buy these things, wear them, and feel pretty damn good about the fact that you're gonna have them, you know, <laughs> almost forever. Now, the best part I've saved for last. Now, best is best for me as an American. Maybe if you're watching this in a different country, it won't really matter, but 1620 makes all of their stuff in America. Now, being made in America is no guarantee of quality. Junk is made here domestically in the USA, and it's made everywhere else, as are good products, okay? And we all kind of know that, but I think that there's a lot of people, it, ma it matters a lot where their products come from, and I understand that because it directly affects your neighbors and friends. It gives jobs to people who are in your community and contribute to your economy. So in that aspect, I like the fact that we are making things here again. If you're living in another country and you're still just looking, that doesn't matter to you at all, but you're looking for a very, very high quality, top of the heat kind of brand, 1620 is it. Regardless of where they made these things, if they were made in Bangladesh, Vietnam, or, you know, I don't know, the roof of my house, they're still great. You can't take that away from them. Being made in the USA as an American is just another brand benefit to me. So. These are the three new kids on the block as far as I'm concerned. Three workwear brands that I hadn't really heard of until very, very recently, and especially True Work and 1620 have only been around, you know, under 10 years. Snickers is just 
a brand from a different country that I never heard of. So these are some worth looking into and I haven't found one duck canvas thing among them. So it's kind of neat. They really are taking a, a different path than most workwear that we know. Now workwear, it's always changing, it's always evolving, it's always doing something new, so please stay tuned and check out what I have coming up for you because I'll be continuing to cover workwear, put these things up against each other, maybe even do some torture testing and see which one holds up versus the others. You know, a whole bunch of good stuff coming up, so if you like what you see, think about subscribing and watching more. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.